wiring up this beast and it is nice to have simplicity it does have its advantages but there is no protection on this unit at all whatsoever and um, compared to well this isn't the whole wiring mess you only get to see some of it so when you add something like the three phase protector inside there and what did they else they had to all this wiring right here was just all mangled and bunched and closed inside this cabinet before uh, when we do go to reinstall this stuff actually get a new one because these things go bad those go bad and if that goes bad you take out your compressor because you have you keep running your compressor with no fan on it um, yeah the wiring mess is definitely gonna get uh, not done like this again to where it's just a big pile of wires inside there so but right now for now we just need to get them up and running and this is a used unit downstairs so this is new, replacing the old one, but it's the same old air handler that's downstairs. That did not get replaced. It's the same old piping. And if you've seen the last video of how burnt and black the oil was, so I drained out the oil, and here's the oil from sitting overnight. And you can see all the contaminants inside the oil. Let's see if we can focus in it really good. You can see all that. And down at the bottom there you could see a thick layer of black nasty stuff back down at the bottom of the container so that came out of the old one and we're not going through the hole I showed you in the last video oh, oh I still have it here in the last video how black it is inside there this is on the inlet and then uh, the liquid dryer and it is still white on the outlet filter so the outlet filter is still white thank god uh the guy who did install this guess he didn't see that it had a filter already inside one of the spun filters and uh this one does not they gave you a little factory putrix uh one i wanted to get the size up bigger from this but they didn't have the liquid line since this was a burnout and i measured the oil and the oil that came out of there was one liter and the compressor came with 1.24 liters of oil that means 250 240 milliliters of oil of that overheated oil that is not in good shape is still in the system down in the evaporator in the lines one liter of it was inside the old condenser so I put a suction line filter on it, have this on it. We are down to uh, 65 microns. And yes, I went through hoses, you go, but it would have been so simple just to do a single line. I wanted to actually read it and I wasn't gonna put on my micron gauge. And since I know I have burnt, black, dirty oil in the system and we're not doing a flush, I'm gonna go through my lines. But I got the 65 microns. That's reading at this point here. You know it's not 65 microns there. It's probably um, 180, 200 microns. If I, put a, if I put a micron meter right here, or not even right here because, well, I'm on both of them. Doesn't make a difference. If I put a one right here, it's probably 185, 280 microns here. And the only reason it's reading 65 because the sensor is right here that's why this method is not the best method let me clamp crimp it off right now and i know there's it should be good and another thing they had and you can see i'm messy uh i hate safe uh silfos eight uh you know the old well they don't have lead in it more it really sucks when it doesn't have lead in it god that stuff is garbage um so i just reused their copper piping and all the fittings he had and since he already had stay bright at stay bright eight he already had stay bright eight in there so the copper is contaminated you cannot silver braze over stay bright eight and i wasn't going to get more copper i wasn't gonna, i wasn't going to do anything so i reused all the copper 
and I use Stay Bright 8 on his existing Stay Bright 8. So that's what I did. And as you can see, I, I hate non-lead stuff. They should allow lead to be in Stay Bright 8 because it's not being used for water. It's being used and when it's sold in an HVAC uh, warehouse, it should be leaded. Uh, it's so, it flows so nice, it builds so nice. This um, new Stay Bright sucks. But that's about it. Oh, and I did retest my Stay Bright. Since I used Stay Bright, which I don't agree with, I put my fittings on and then I removed them. I heated them back up and I removed them to see inside that I had 360 degree coverage. There was no barren open spots and that it went all the way, it, it fed all the way to the back. It creeped. I had the heat back here, and since you only need 400 and some degrees, nothing gets hot. And uh, and then I put it back together again. But I wanted to double check my work, since I'm working with something that I don't always work with. Now in plumbing, I use lead, okay? But in refrigeration, I definitely would never use this. But since I did, I double checked my work by taking it back apart and looking to make sure I had 360 degree coverage and that my, um, Stay Bright 8 sucked all the way to the back of the work, all the way to the back, furthest back seal. So I'm good to go there, just because I don't trust myself on, on using this. All right, guys, we'll see you later. We're about to fill this up. And uh, you see, I turned off the vacuum here and 185. And what did I say that, what did I guess that the system pressure would be? Somewhere around 185 to 250. So I shut off the vacuum. And well, we just clicked up to, but somewhere around 185. And that's just by using guesstimates. And, and when you do this enough times, you know, and this is a used system. This is not a brand new clean system. And that's 185 using refrigerant hoses. Now, if I would have used just the single hose on the system or a double hose system on the system without refrigerant hoses, my standing decay vacuum would probably be somewhere around 100. I would have got the system down to about 30 or 40 and my decay with a Accutech um, blue vac hose attached right here would have been somewhere about 65 to 100. And you do this a, a couple thousand times and you learn. All right guys, I'll see you later.